Welcome to part two of my PowerPoint recreation of the guided tours from Microsoft's Dangerous Creatures. See part one for full details. Today we're covering the second four tours, which are narrated in the program by a guide called Christine. And in the first sentence of her first tour, you'll notice, or probably guess, that I've changed one particular word to better suit me. And I apologize again for the audio quality. As I said in part one, I recorded it years ago on a headset. So, here we go. I'm happy to be male, and I'm also glad I'm human. Now, in the human world, males and females are finally receiving equal treatment, although still not everywhere. But in the animal world, being male or female can make a big difference to how your life turns out. Click the arrow button below to see what I mean. If you're a female Black Widow spider, you really have it made. You've only got to worry about predators that want to eat you, and most wild animals have that worry. But if you're male, you have to watch out for predators, and you also have to worry about the intentions of that female spider you've been dating. A lot of Black Widow males never get a chance to kiss and tell, because the females eat them after they mate. Male scorpions sometimes have the same problem. So if you had to be a scorpion, it would be better to be a female scorpion. If you're a female lion, it's mostly up to you to bring home the bacon, and the zebra, and the wildebeest. And then the males eat first the ungrateful cads, and you get what's left over. Now, if you're a male lion, you can lie around a lot of the time. But it's your job to protect the pride, and sooner or later you'll have to face something really frightening. One of these. Yes, as a male lion, you'll have to fight with other males to keep your territory. So you'd better keep in shape, or you'll soon be sitting on a termite mound all by yourself, wondering what went wrong. If you're reasonably sociable and you have leadership qualities, you'd be better off as a female in the elephant world. It's the females who stay together, and it's a female who leads the herd. If you're a male, you'll be kicked out of the family circle sooner or later, and you'll only be allowed to visit when the females want you to. But you can go off and push down a tree or two to make yourself feel better, or find some other males to brood with. Now, in the world of cape hunting dogs, the situation is reversed. The males stay together in the clan, and most females get pushed out when they're fully grown. So it's the females who have to leave on their own, shredding a zebra or a young wildebeest now and then, living homeless until they find a clan that will take them in. If you're a male toad or frog, you will soon find yourself interested in females and you'll feel like croaking. But although the females are bound to be impressed with your croaking skills, there's a danger in making music out in the wilderness. You might attract someone else's attention. Like this sly serpent. It doesn't matter what gender the snake is, and the snake doesn't care whether its prey is male or female. One toe tastes much like the next, and they all taste very good to a snake. If you're the sedentary type, you would do well to be born as a queen in the ant world. After your first flight to find a mate, you won't have to move a muscle, you'll be weighted on hand and foot. Of course, you will also have to lay thousands of eggs in your lifetime. Both male and female platypuses lead fairly tranquil lives. But if you're going to encounter animals that want to fight, or that want to eat you, it would be better to be male. Only the males have venomous spurs on their hind legs. One swift kick can leave a small animal paralyzed or a person numb for hours. In the world of the wolf, it doesn't make much difference whether you're male or female. Either way, you'll still have to hunt and you'll have to learn the rules of the pack. You won't be allowed to mate or have babies unless you're the male or female leader. If you're born a mouse, you're already in trouble. Whether you're male or female, millions of predators all over the world want to have you for dinner. Or breakfast. Or lunch. But if you're lucky enough to survive until adulthood, you'll probably want to be male unless you really love kids. As a female mouse, you could have hundreds of babies in your lifetime. All in all, it makes you glad to be a human, doesn't it? Because of our evolution, we enjoy a lot more choice in our lives.
Would you like to be a wildlife photographer? It's certainly not for wimps. It requires a lot of patience and sometimes great nerve to place yourself in the situations you need to take really good pictures. Come along and I'll show you examples of the most difficult shots to take. Click the button below to get started. Now here's a really difficult picture to take. First of all, snow leopards live only in the high mountains of Asia, so you've got to be willing to scale the Himalayas. To make it even more difficult, these cats are rarely seen, so it might take you months or even years of tramping around through the snow before you can get a photo like this. Like snow leopards, tigers are confined to only a few places on Earth, and to make it worse, poachers keep picking off the few that are left. Also, any wild animal with babies is fiercely protective, and the tiger is the most powerful cat alive. So you're taking your life in your hands to be this close, even with a zoom lens. Sometimes you may think that you're alone with the wild animals you see through your camera lens, but surprise, there's another one sneaking up on you from behind. You can never afford to forget that you're the intruder in their natural habitat. Scientists worry that no one will be able to take a photo like this ever again. These golden frogs used to gather together every year in Costa Rica, but they haven't done so for many years now. As a matter of fact, frogs seem to be disappearing all over the world. This could mean that something is really wrong with our environment, and that's something far scarier than any of the creatures described in this product. Even if they were not so hard to find in many places, it's always difficult to take pictures of tropical tree frogs because they're, well, way up in the trees in tropical rainforests, so you must be prepared to climb up there to reach them. That might not be too bad, but they're not the only creatures up there. Imagine clinging to some skinny branch way above the ground and coming face to face with this. It's a yellow eyelash viper from Central America. It's venomous, and it also hunts through the rainforest canopy for tree frogs. Would you believe there's even more competition for those tree frogs? You might find something like this up there as well. Some tarantulas spend all their lives in trees, eating insects, frogs, and lizards, and picking defenseless baby birds out of nests. Fortunately, these spiders are not interested in photographers. But enough of trees, there are other, more dangerous places to shoot. Like underwater. If you're trying for great shark shots, you had better be in a cage like this, or your diving companions may recover only your camera. Even when you're in a cage, it's hard to keep your hands from shaking when you're looking down the throat of a great white shark. You'll wish you were in a plexiglass cage if you're ever this close to an Australian sea wasp. You won't find many good pictures of live sea wasps because nobody wants to go anywhere near them. Their nearly invisible tentacles can dangle many meters below their bodies, and those tentacles are packed with stinging cells. They're so deadly that your first encounter with an Australian sea wasp could also be your last. Here's another floating thing with long stinging tentacles that nobody wants to get close to. When I and my photographer friend see a Portuguese man of war floating on the surface of the water, we spend a lot of time arguing about who will approach it underwater and try to snap the photo. You go over there. No, it's your turn. And of course, by the time we've drawn straws, the tide has changed and it's conveniently floated away. If you have the training and the equipment to do really deep water dives, you can attempt photos like this. There are a lot of fearsome looking things down there where the sunlight doesn't reach. It's so dark down here that fish can't see each other very well, so some of them make their own light, not to see by, but to attract smaller fish to eat. How would you like to see these glow-in-the-dark jaws swimming towards you? It's a good thing these dragonfish are very small. But some giants live in the depths too, like this humongous whale shark. It's the biggest fish in the oceans, not to mention the biggest shark. But even though it's large enough to swallow a dozen people in one gulp, it eats only plankton, although it might accidentally suck down a fish or two. 
whale sharks are rarely seen, so if you can stay calm enough to get a great photo like this, it's worth a mint. This is the last stop on my photo tour. Did you know that when people get hurt by wild animals, it's usually because those people have behaved in some very silly way? Click the arrow button below and I'll show you what I mean. Aw, oh, what a sweet little thing. I'll just give it these marshmallows, Herman, while you take a picture. Famous last word. While the tourists are sidling up to the bear cub, Mummy Bear is probably browsing around just on the other side of that big tree. All it takes is one little squeak from Baby. Yes, and Mummy Bear is much bigger than most people might think, not to mention a lot faster and meaner. After all, just what is that stranger doing with her cub? Keep your marshmallows in the car and you'll stand a better chance of keeping all your body parts in place. A camera is also an item that has landed many an amateur photographer in trouble with animals. The typical scenario might go something like this. Just a little closer, Maureen, just a little closer. Five more steps and this shot will be perfect. Of course, a buffalo might let you come five steps closer, but who knows, perhaps two more steps might be the limit before it decides to stamp you into a pancake. Now, this may be called a monster, but that's because of its looks, not because of its personality. You have to work really hard to get a healer monster angry. They would much rather hide than fight. Most people who have been hurt by these creatures were doing things like betting they could put their fingers into the lizard's mouth without being bitten, or carrying healer monsters hidden inside their jackets. I don't have to tell you that behavior like this is really stupid, do I? Here's another creature that's often been the victim of human jokes. Rattlesnakes have been shipped across the country in surprise packages, stuffed into mailboxes, and tossed from person to person at parties. Of course they bite! You'd bite too if someone was treating you like that. Never underestimate how fast or how far a wild animal can move. If you're out golfing and you see an alligator floating in the water hazard, don't stop at the edge to get a closer view. That alligator's teeth could be clamped onto your leg before you could shout, Hey Caddy, how about bringing that cart over here? Some people may have nightmares about vampire bats swooping down out of the darkness to bite them in the neck. But let's be realistic. You would have to go to Central America, peel a vampire bat off a cave roof somewhere, gently of course because they're tiny little things, and then press it to your neck. If you do all that, you deserve to get bitten. Constrictors like pythons or boas often appear in pet shops. Now, because these snakes are not venomous, some people think they don't bite. Wrong! How do you think they grab onto a mouse or a bird to eat it? Move too quickly in front of them and you may find out just how long and sharp their teeth are. Also, constrictors feel nice to the touch, but sometimes these snakes want to get cuddly too. If you give one a hug, it may hug you back, and it may not let you go. Darling pups, huh? Sometimes you might see wild animal babies like these fuzzy baby wolves for sale. However, not only is it illegal in many places to keep a wild animal, but they really don't make good pets either. Of course, they look lovely and are fun to play with when they're young, but they do grow up. Then, oh no, bad puppies! When they're big, they act like the wild animals they're meant to be. An adult wolf, even one that you've raised from a pup, may attack livestock, other pets, or even people. The same goes for any predator, like an ocelot or a fox, for example. They're not being mean, they're just doing what nature tells them to do. And obedience training is probably not going to help. A little salamander doesn't look dangerous, so you might be tempted to pick one up. Don't! Many of them have powerful venom that they can squeeze out of special glands when they're frightened. If you get it on your hands and then wipe your mouth or your eye, you could end up in hospital. They don't want to be grabbed anyway, so just leave them alone. Now here's a gentle creature that a lot of divers get into trouble with, even if they don't get bitten by it. 
It's soft and squishy, and it's only a small animal, isn't it? An octopus may not have much muscle power, but it has suction on its side. It can latch onto a rock with a few arms and hold onto your foot with a couple more. And there you are, stuck onto an octopus that's stuck to the ocean floor. The octopus can breathe underwater. Too bad you can't. So to sum up, the basic message is you can have a lot of fun with wild animals, but you have got to respect them too. The fun is in watching them and taking pictures of them, not in teasing them. And it's certainly no fun to fight with them. Do you have your scuba gear ready to go? Tanks filled up with air and regulators checked? Well then, let's go on a tour of a coral reef. Click the arrow button and we'll begin. A coral reef is a fantastic world, isn't it? Everything is beautiful down here. But don't get starry-eyed in this wonderland. You always have to watch out. There's danger where you least expect it. Even the coral itself can be treacherous. If you think the coral is a type of rock, you would only be partially right. That hard substance that landlubbers call coral is a solidified covering created by millions of tiny corals, which are animals, although they look more like plants. Now, these orange ones are fire corals, and if you brush up against them with your bare skin, you'll find out how they got that name. They sting like red-hot coals. Did you know that starfish have a mouth at the center of their bodies and eyes on the ends of each arm? They can shake hands and poke each other in the eye at the same time. And you thought creatures like that existed only in science fiction. Actually, the ocean is like an alien world right here on Earth. Speaking of aliens, here's one now. Pufferfish can blow themselves up like balloons. They usually do this by sucking in water, but some have been known to go to the surface and suck in air. Now, that's not very clever, because it makes them float on the surface of the water, leaving them exposed to birds swooping down to peck at them. But then, most fish are not known for their intelligence. However, pufferfish don't have to be clever, because they're poisonous to eat. How would you like to spend your life in a box? That's what these odd little fish do. They have hard skeleton boxes right under their skin, instead of ribs and a backbone like some other fish. It's very hard to swim fast if you're box-shaped, so these little fellows spend a lot of time close to the reef where they can hide. In fact, wherever there's a hiding place, like a hole or a crevice in a reef, the chances are that there will be something waiting inside. A moray eel may come rushing out at you like this, and that can scare the wetsuit off you. But morays usually don't bite, so consider yourself lucky. However, if you're unlucky, something else might come out. And if it looks anything like this, you'd better back paddle fast. Sea snakes are related to cobras, and the venom of some types is powerful enough to kill a person. Oh no, there's no way I want to be this close to a sea snake ever again. You can probably recognize a snake when you see one, whether it's on land or swimming in the ocean but you'd be surprised to find out what is venomous down here. For example, these cone shells that you see in the lower left corner provide a home for some fairly nasty cr little creatures. If you pick one up, the mollusk inside can stab you with a venomous barb like a harpoon. Now, as for this giant blue clam, people tell stories about it, but it's not really dangerous, unless it closes its shell on your foot and holds you down until you run out of air. Keep your foot out of its face and you'll be a lot safer. Did you know that every octopus has a sharp beak at the center of its eight arms? Believe me, you don't want to find out, especially with this one. This tiny blue-ringed octopus is armed with enough venom to send you to your grave. Let's swim on. Here's a fish that's a real show-off. It seems to parade around as if saying, look at me, I'm the best looking fish here, aren't I? But a lionfish has good reason to be vain. Not only is it beautiful, but those spines are sharp and venomous too. So everything down here will look at a lionfish, but nothing will touch it. If you decide to stand up on the ocean floor, you had better take a good look first. 
If you put your foot on one of these, it could be the last step you'll ever take. Stonefish are deadly, and they like to bury themselves in the sand so that they blend in with the lumps of rock and coral. This guy looks like he could cut you in half. But don't worry, sawfish use their chainsaw snouts to impale fish, not people. Can you imagine how frustrating it would be to get a fish stuck on one of those nose spikes? It would be something like having a hamburger glued to the side of your face. Hey, it's a runaway rug! Actually, this floating bundle of rags is called a Wobegong shark, and it always wears camouflage like this so it can lie in wait for its prey on the bottom. Pretty sneaky, eh? One little Wobegong shark is fine with me, but a bunch of hammerheads gives definite cause for concern. Let's head back to the boat. Swim nice and steadily now, and don't flop around like a wounded fish. When a whole group of sharks comes together, it's time for people to get out of the water. Mobs can't ever be trusted. Oh my god, I've seen this monster before in my nightmares. If divers say they aren't afraid of great white sharks, they're either crazy or they're lying. These giants eat a lot of marine mammals, and a diver in a wetsuit and flippers can look a lot like a sea lion. Let's get out now before he circles back. <laughs>